Are you struggling to make your first 100K or next? Are you pretending you're successful, but barely getting by? Are you tired of comparing yourself to millionaires and billionaires who make it look so easy? Welcome to First 100K, the number one entrepreneur voice in America. I talk about the important things that no one else is talking about, like how to make your first $100,000, because I believe this is where 90% of entrepreneurs get stuck. And I tackle the mental game of entrepreneurship that we all secretly struggle with but won't admit. My guests are successful entrepreneurs who share their mistakes, their number one fears, their daily habits, and their superpowers that push them over the 100K mark. I'm your host, your coach, your friend, Joseph Warren. I'm also a 10-time failed entrepreneur and the owner of two co-working spaces here in Tampa, Florida. This show was created for you, the entrepreneur who's pushing to break through the elusive 100K milestone. Wherever you are in your business, you're just 100K away. Today, my featured guest is Brian Robinson. He's a sales and marketing expert, best-selling author and coach. He has worked for some of the best known companies in the world, including Coca-Cola USA and Johnson & Johnson. Upon leaving his corporate career, he helped launch a successful startup where he was the first person in the history of the industry to sell more than $1 million in business in 12 months, entirely by telephone. How's that startup nation? So if you're interested in learning how to sell, especially by telephone, listen up. Brian's going to share his secrets, his tips, his strategies. He has over two decades of in-the-trenches, battle-tested, face-to-face, and phone presentation experience that can benefit virtually anyone, including you, in this pandemic. He's done it uh, for Fortune 500 companies all the way down to entrepreneurial ventures. Brian is the author of the Amazon number one bestseller, The Selling Formula, Five Steps for Instant Sales Improvement. Brian and his wife, Cindy, reside in Oklahoma City, uh, and they have eight children. That's so cool. Eight children? Man, you really sold your wife, bro. I'm just saying. Oh, man. No kidding. No kidding. Brian, welcome to your uh, first 100K. Go ahead and fill in some of the gaps in that intro, would you? Sure. It's an honor to be here, Joseph. Thank you so much. One of the big gaps, if you will, is the transition from corporate America to a startup. That was quite an experience. I, my wife and I took about four months of serious prayer to consider whether we should leave the corporate environment where I had the bennies, the car, all that good stuff, right? And when you walk in to talk to somebody, they've heard of Johnson & Johnson <laughs> or they've heard of Coca-Cola. And I helped a friend start this company that I'm still in that sells, get ready for it, on hold messages. So if somebody calls a business, gets put on hold, they'll hear the messages that we create to cross promote products, et cetera. And <laughs> We fortunately niched ourselves in the banking and credit union industry. And that was a, a wise move because banks pay their bills and so do credit unions. But we had to cold call everybody. We were driving about 1,000 to 1,500 miles a week, cold calling banks and credit unions. And if we didn't sell, we didn't eat. It's a familiar story, I'm sure, to your listeners. One of the key things I wanted to share was a a dream I had. I've had only three vivid dreams that I remember clearly in my life. And we were at the point of having made the decision to go on board with this friend of ours. And I had this dream where I was being drafted. And as you may remember, when the draft was alive in the United States, it was a two-year commitment. When your number got called, you're in for two years, no matter what. So I had this dream, I was being drafted. I walk into this cinder block room and there's a whole line of men in front of me and we're all wearing boxers. So it's pretty vulnerable. And it's a cinder block, again, cinder block, block building. There's a light hanging from the ceiling and a woman sitting on a stool handing out fatigues and boots. And she's, the perspective is she's way up there and I'm this way down here. She hands me my fatigues and my boots and she says, Mr. Robinson, I want you to know you will no longer eat when you want to eat, drink when you want to drink, or do what you want to do 
we're going to tell you everything that's going to happen. And the dream ended just like that. And I woke up thinking, oh my goodness, what does this mean? And I journal a lot. And as I started to journal, it became very clear. You, there is no turning back for at least two years with this commitment, no matter what. And I had recruiters calling me from back into the medical industry that I came from. And I said, no, only because of that dream. And if I hadn't, I would not be talking to you right now, I'm sure. So that set me on a path, a very challenging path. I thought I knew how to sell. I was a top performer in these companies. But you talk about a humbling experience. It was difficult. I remember pulling over the side of the road multiple times, just weeping and asking God to help me because I was so broken and needed guidance. And he helped me. And it was literally hour by hour for, it felt like, years. <laughs> but uh, it worked out. So, Brian, you're driving 1,000 miles a week. You're cold calling on banks, which is a, a not-so-friendly experience many times. Um, what was going on on the inside? What were some of the voices you were hearing in, in between your ears? You know, one of the things that kept recurring was this picture of a freight train about 60 days behind me. And I have to outrun this freight train or it's going to crush me, right? It's the freight train of no sales and no money. And, it, and interestingly, we had six children at the time and my wife just had twins. Mm. So I am really running hard. And the motivation was do whatever it takes, pivot as fast as you can, whatever works, dig into it, whatever doesn't, throw it away, let's go. That was the mindset. Mm. What were some of the voices though? The voices. Self-doubt, self uh -huh. any like uh, mantras or limiting belief systems that just kept repeating over and over again? Because I know Startup Nation has those right now. Mm. You're not going to make it. What if you, what if this was a really stupid decision? Wouldn't it be a lot easier to just go back into the corporation or corporate world where people know who you are? They know your company. Wouldn't that be a lot easier than doing this? What were you thinking? How are you going to make it? Yeah. Those were the voices. Mm. Thank you for sharing those. I think We've all experienced one or two of those in our lifetime. Startup Nation, maybe you're hearing one or two of those voices right now with whatever it is you're up to. We're in a pandemic. Everything that we know has shifted. Everything that we know to be normal. Everything that we thought we had control over. We just realized we didn't. It was all a facade. It's been taken away. It's been moved. It's been shifted. There's that old book, Who Moved My Cheese? Remember that book, Brian? Mm-hmm. That was a good book, right? Someone moved your cheese, Startup Nation. You got to go find the cheese. So, Brian, how did you push through that um, and really continue that, that daily grind on the road and believe? Like, what was the shift? What was the mindset shift where you went from all those limiting belief systems, those voices in your head of self-doubt, desperation, despair, to man, I really can do this. Like, how did you make that transition? And then uh, what were the actual outcomes or results that you started to see? A couple things helped me with the transition. First, I really started to systematize what I was doing. I looked, took a step back. I actually recorded my sales conversations. I debriefed them with a notebook every time I walked out of a prospect's office. And it helped me see things from a third party perspective because I'm stuck inside my own bottle. I can't read the writing on the label. So I think the best way to get out of that is to actually try to do that with a journal, a post sales call journal or recording yourself. And that helped me recognize what was working. I dissected that. And actually that is what's in the book, the selling formula, that process. Secondly, I had to figure out a way to get off the road. This cold call selling thing was a hamster wheel, and it was brutal. So I started to apply 
some things I learned from some of the CDs at the time I was listening to. One of the biggest thing that changed my ability to get leads was free recorded messages. And I learned that from Joe Polish from his um, Piranha Marketing series years ago. And I started to implement that at our office, had an extension, and I was sending out, <laughs> this will date me, fax blasts <laughs> and uh, asking people to call this toll-free number at our office. And the, uh, the receptionist would get overwhelmed. We would send them out around noon to our endorsed states and we'd get overwhelmed with calls, people leaving messages on the line. So I thought, hey, maybe I'm onto something here. And it gave me permission to call them back and either meet them in person or potentially visit with them over the phone. That morphed into doing direct mail to a landing page with a video that literally allowed me to get off the road for good. So what I heard you just say is you did something very similar to what a lot of entrepreneurs are finding themselves doing right now in this pandemic. You went from offline to online. Mm -hmm. Literally, you were on the road and now you're on the line, so to speak. That sounded ridiculous. But you get what I'm saying. You went virtual. You took your entire business model, at least your, your sales calls and, and lead generation, you took it virtual and it worked for you. Mm -hmm. So Startup Nation, how can you do something similar to Brian? Brian, what do you got for Startup Nation right now? What could they be doing right now uh, to really, let's focus first, before we get into sales, let's focus on lead generation because I think right now, many, many, many entrepreneurs are struggling to, to bring in those leads consistently while people uh, their prospective clients and customers are, many uh, of them are in this fear um, type of mindset and holding on to cash mm -hmm. and, and very skeptical to who they're going to buy with right now. Mm -hmm. So what do you got for them? What can they be doing right now um, effectively to bring in those leads? I found that one of the most disarming ways to generate a lead is to create a video. You can use uh, Bonjoro, you can use BombBomb, those types of services, and get into somebody's inbox with an authentic short video asking for an, an introductory phone call. And there's a connection there that you can make with somebody where otherwise you might not be able to. It's not like cold calling on the phone and leaving a voicemail, which I still think is a valid means of of generating leads, but I think it's more powerful to potentially get in their inbox with a video. So that's one way. Another way is what I've been doing for multiple years now, and that is a direct mail piece to my targets with a very specific call to go to a specific web address to, again, look at a video. Obviously, it's going to be a little more pointed, more, more sales slash client oriented and ask them to do one thing and just respond. And that gives you permission to circle back with them. And those are the two things that spring to mind is I think the most potentially effective right now. Now, if you had to choose only one of them, which would you choose and why? From a cold calling perspective right now, I would use the Bonjoro or BombBomb approach of sending video to people's inbox. Yeah, and the I, reason, yeah. yeah go ahead. And the reason is that um, that's more easily accessible. The cost is minimal for the potential return. Yeah, I'm in agreement with that. I mean, direct mail pieces, I've done it. it I haven't done it very well, you know, with my former business that got acquired. But uh, we spent a lot of money and there's a major learning curve to know how to position that, et cetera, right? But mm -hmm. I think what you're saying, um, sending out a video, especially right now in a very skeptical marketplace, where your prospective client can look at you, see mm -hmm. you, see your mannerisms, decide whether or not they like you just as a person <laughs> based on how you're showing up in the video. Is this guy or gal for real? Are they authentic? Are they genuine? Are they trying to push something on me? They're reading your body language. And what's great is you're allowing them to. Mm -hmm. you're get, there's vulnerability in sending a video of yourself, isn't there? Yes. Absolutely. Right? You're allowing people to judge you freely mm -hmm. and to choose you right. freely. 
And that's the, that's the secret sauce right there. I like that. And just so you know, and I'll be real with you, I'm about to start doing that myself. Like today I have on my calendar, uh, let's see here, check out Loom, which is also uh-huh. a service like Bonbon video emails. Um, because I want to shift some of what I'm doing with my perspective, lead, uh, clients and lead generation. Same thing, right? Same thing. Mm-hmm. All right. So you can find, we're speaking with Brian Robinson. Uh, you can find him at brianrobinson.me.me, brianrobinson.me. Uh, Brian, tell us about your book, um, mm-hmm. specifically. So the selling formula, uh, what are your top three, uh, strategies in your book that startup nation can apply right now to increase their lead generation or incre- increase their closing rate in their selling presentations. We discuss lead generation. Mm-hmm. As far as closing, I think one of the most profound questions that I wound up using at the end of a sales discussion, when I felt the skids, when I felt the brakes coming on, and the wheels skidding <laughs> by the prospect was um, if I could offer you in some incentive to move forward now, as opposed to later, would you be opposed to hearing about it? So I'm not offering an incentive unless they're open to hearing about it mm-hmm. and actually just having permission to have that discussion. I've only had one or two prospects ever say no, I'm not going to listen to any offer you have. It won't make any difference in my decision. Okay, that's fine. But curiosity will almost always get the prospect to say, okay, I'm open to that. And then you can go ahead and provide some potential incentive to make, to allow them to move forward now as opposed to later. It's just a very honest question. Mm -hmm. And it changed. It was a game changer. My sales went up 50% after starting to ask that question. My closings, I should say. Mm, that's so cool. I remember when I started this uh, coaching business that I'm in right now. Uh, my close rate sucked up front uh, in the join beginning. The club. <laughs> yeah, join the club, right? And uh, something that dramatically increased it was what you're saying, where I uh, didn't share the the investment uh, amount or the price of my uh, coaching um, package until the the prospective client said that they were in. So I've asked them, I'd, I'd kind of do the my presentation and then I'd say, so are you in? And they're like, well, I, I mean, I would need to know the price and stuff like that. I was like, yeah, I appreciate that. But first I want to know if you're in, otherwise there's no point in even having that conversation, <laughs> right? And they're like, well, yeah, I guess, I guess not. Uh, yeah, I'm in. All right, so if the price works, the numbers work, everything like that, fits your budget, you're in. They're like, yeah, I'm in. And right there, I got one or two yeses mm-hmm. that just kind of start uh, complimenting. And I tell you, that really uh, upped my, my closing rate. So I, I love what you're saying right there. What else can Startup Nation do? You know, this idea speaks to what you just said. And in the book, I talk about how you present your pricing. And as opposed to, and I found that having three tiers is very effective. It's not applicable to every single thing, but having an ABC kind of option tends to work well from a concept of anchoring. Most people, if you give them the highest price first, that's their anchor and you go down from there. My my point is this, I would offer three different options and tell them what was included and ask them before I ever shared the price, which one of these options do you think would make the most sense to try? And what they've done is they've made a choice for an option prior, just like you, prior to my giving them the price and they've justified it. Then I provide the pricing and of course, a potential incentive if they're open to that. And it made closing a lot easier because their mind wasn't focused on price. It was focused on the elements of each option and which one might work for me Mm. as the prospect. I like that. You really uh, pointed them where you wanted them to go rather than the default switch we all have, which is price. Right. Wow. Very powerful. What is a, uh, you, you mentioned before you tell them the incentive. Can you give us an example of an incentive? Yeah. So in our business, um, selling on hold messages or in lobby digital signage, an incentive might be if I could offer you free installation 
uh, would you be open to trying this? If I could offer you 90 days without any risk of a commitment, would you be open to trying this? Those types of things. And I think the biggest fear a lot of us have is using a guarantee, but the data shows and my experience shows that a guarantee can be an absolute game changer for you if you're willing to stand with the guarantee. For example, in the book, I share a story about I was doing some consulting for a company in the banking industry who was selling a software for loan processing. There are quite a few companies doing this. Well, I asked them what the pain points were, and they shared four key pain points with me. And I did something, I suggested something very different when they did a presentation, their keynote or their PowerPoint. The first thing they said was, we have four guarantees for our service, and here they are. And they laid the guarantees out. And it changed everything in the flow of the conversation because it immediately showed the prospects they knew what the issues were. Now, were other vendors able to offer the same guarantees? Yeah. Were they? No. So the one who offered the guarantees won. They tripled their business because they're willing to offer these guarantees that spoke to the issues that the prospects had. So do you think guarantees would be effective and prudent for someone who's a coach? Because I have a lot of coaches on this show mm -hmm. and it's a service that they're providing, not a specific product. Uh, so for them to offer, say, a money back guarantee on their coaching, when it really the results and outcomes depends on the client and them doing the work. Uh, do you think that's a good strategy? And if so, how would you recommend they do that? You know, I can go back to, to answer this question. I was coaching as well. I had a company called the ultimate challenge. And this may be an answer. We, it was an eight week program. It was all out accountability with the prospect. They gave us their credit card. We had weekly calls. We agreed to what they would do that next week to move forward to their goal. If they didn't do it, they knew how much their credit card would be charged for not acting. We had one of our clients, for example, who was on a cruise. She didn't check in on the conference call. She got charged $2,000 for missing the conference call. Um, it's bulldog accountability. So if a prospect's open to that kind of accountability, uh, I think the answer is, yeah, I think you can offer a guarantee there. That's bold. Yeah. Now I know for some of you coaches out there listening, your inner voice is saying, there's no way I could present that to a prospective client. Brian, what would you say to them? I would say, what is the commitment level to change that your client has? And really flesh, uh, get that out in the open. And based on the commitment level you discover, then you put your feet, their feet to the fire based on the commitment level they've personally verbalized to you. So if you're willing to do this, you should be willing to do this. Hmm. And Startup Nation, I'll present this to you as well, just to add to what Brian's saying. Don't you as a coach, wouldn't you rather work with people that are all in on fire, no matter what, they're willing to be fined, you know, $2,000 if they don't do what they said they were going to do? Think of the outcomes and results that client's going to get. Think of your, your track record as a coach. What if you could have a 98%, as an example, a 98% success rate that all your clients achieve the goals or outcomes that they signed up for by the end of your coaching program. And what if you could present that on your, in your sales presentations for future clients? Hey, listen, I, you know, this may sound a little different, but I really need to qualify you because I have a 98% success rate of my clients getting what they sign up for. Here's how I do that. So I need to know whether or not you're that person. That's do you beautiful. really want those changes in your life? And if not, it's totally fine. We'll still be friends. We may not work together though. 
Now, Brian, what do you want to say to that? Is that accurate? Am I totally off base? What do you think? I love it. That is the languaging you just used is spot on. I would use that. Write it down, own it, say it. <laughs> All right, Startup Nation. And you could say real subtly, it doesn't have to be in this aggressive manner like I used to do, which didn't work very well. But I, I've learned if you could say just about anything to anyone on planet Earth, if you have a smile on your face. And, and I used to do that just as just when I was young and dumb and arrogant, I would smile, look people in the eye and just say like the most outrageously offensive things just to kind of like, like a social experiment. But I had a big smile on my face. And some of the most successful guys out there would just bust out laughing because no one spoke to them that way. And now they just wanted to do business with me because mm -hmm. they got a rise out of it. So, all right, we're speaking with Brian Robinson. You can find him at brianrobinson.me.me. Uh, Brian, uh, let's, what do you want to say uh, is the number one reason people don't close more sales? Uh, number one reason is they haven't taken the time to focus on the language that they're using at the end of the conversation and at the front of the conversation. Setting an agenda up front with your prospect uh, is critical for the outcome. Can you give Telling us an example really quickly of how you set up the introduction of a, of a sales conversation? Sure. Joseph, what I'd like to do is share the uh, what we're going to do on this conversation. It's just three points. Are you okay with that? Yes. Yes. What I'd like to do first is ask you some questions about your business to get a better understanding of that. Then secondly, I have a document I'm going to give you that highlights what's included with our service. And we'll walk through that together, just some bullet points. And third, we'll chat about pricing and then finish up. And what Sounds it does, fun. it's it sets the agenda. It sets, they know they know why you're there. You're there to sell something. But the fact that you're actually essentially saying that kind of disarms them hmm. because they know what's coming and they'll track with you on pacing with what you're going to do from step to step. Got it. Awesome. Thank you for that. What is the best, if, if you could pick, uh, this may sound redundant, um, but if you could pick one vehicle all right, we did video emails. I got that. One vehicle uh, to generate massive traffic to your website. What would you be doing right now? What would you recommend? What is it in this pandemic? I would be doing what we talked about. I can't think of a better way to generate traffic than personal videos to your target market. You or really believe in it that much? I do. Okay. Startup Nation. There you have it. Like I, 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 I dug their Startup Nation. Like I, I went that extra question, right? Just to see is Brian for real on this? Or is he just saying something that sounds good? And, and he's for real. He's the real deal. So Brian, welcome to my favorite part of the show. Welcome to the hustle round. I'm going to ask you 10 quick fire questions. You'll have about three seconds to answer each. Don't overthink it. It's just for fun. Are you ready, sir? Mm hmm. What's your favorite thing about being an entrepreneur or about having to sell? What's your favorite thing? It's the freedom of not having a corporate arm judging me and telling me what to do and how to do it. Okay. Now, what's your least favorite thing about doing it? Because now you got all the weight of the world on your back. My least favorite thing is it can be pretty lonely. It really can. Got mm -hmm. it. All right. Let's get personal. What are you most afraid of? Unbelief. How do you mean that? Not believing that I can do what I feel like the Lord has put in my heart to do. They're having a disconnect between this picture of what I believe I'm able to do versus what I'm actually doing in that gap. And living in that gap as opposed to stepping out in faith and doing what I believe I'm supposed to do. Brian, I think you just uh, reached out and spiritually slapped all of us. So thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, I believe we all struggle with uh, something at any given moment of our lives. What are you struggling with uh, either professionally or personally right now? Um, abiding. And what I mean by that is 
I get on a roll during the day and don't have meaningful breaks where I just pause and just sit still and just listen to the voice of the Lord. And what I mean by that is just what am I hearing? What's going on in my heart? And really kind of soul care, just eliminating soul care because I'm so busy. Mm. I like that soul care. So I can tell you're a spiritual guy. You bring uh, your faith into your business. I respect that very much. What did you spend way too much time doing in your your first year in this uh, your business? <laughs> stressing out, just stressing out um, with eight kids at home to feed and cold calling. It was just part of, I think there's seasons where it's just flat out hard and you just got to do hard. All right, Startup Nation, I love that we're speaking with Brian right now because he takes away all our excuses, doesn't he? He's got eight kids to provide for and he sells, he cold calls and, and he does it successfully. Now, Brian, just for context, Startup Nation wants to know how you're doing financially. What's the revenue amount? What did you guys bring in gross revenue last year in your business about approximately? Our company did um, just under $9 million. Okay, $9 million dollars. Tell me this is from cold calling. Are you kidding me right now? Every, we have uh, eight representatives and all of them built their book of business cold calling. Wow. Startup Nation, if you want the real deal and the guy behind it, that's who we're speaking with, Brian Robinson. Brian, uh, what secret fear do you have about people? Being you, you get to speak with them every day and do these presentations. Is there a secret fear you have in the back of your head? That they won't value what I'm saying they'll dismiss it. Yeah, I get that one. What do you wish you had learned sooner in your business? How to not cold call. <laughs> without it. <laughs> Listen, you've had 20 years. I mean, come on, buddy. All right. <laughs> what is a new habit that you want to form? I think it circles back to just being more uh, present in mm -hmm. everything I'm doing with an eye to what is the Lord speaking in that moment? Kind of pinging what's his heart in this environment, this conversation, those kind of things. Got it. And what's a bad habit you want to break? It's the opposite of that, not being mindful, just mm -hmm. plowing through. You know, I, I liken it to pushing rocks uphill. I'd rather get behind the eight, an 18 wheeler and draft the 18 wheeler, so to speak, than push rocks yeah. uphill. I get it. Sometimes we do it the hard way, don't we? Mm -hmm. uh, pick three words to describe who you are now. Uh, leader, strategic, comfortable. <laughs> comfortable can be dangerous, right? Comfortable uh, in your own skin. Let's put it that way. Comfortable <laughs> in your own skin. Got it. That's clear. Pick three words to describe who you were your first year in your business. Uh, stressed out, freaked out, but committed. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Sounds dangerous. You don't want that guy coming at you. Okay. I'm just saying he's stressed right out. He's freaked out, but he's committed. Look out. <laughs> and look out. I was definitely that guy for sure. And last question, Brian, if you could come back to life after you died, look your family and friends in the eye, give them only one piece of advice about everything, life, eternity, all of this. What would you say to them? Trust in God. He's sovereign over everything. And He's in control, whether you see it or not. Hmm. I'll start up nation for some of you out there that are faith based. I know Brian is really speaking to your, your hearts right now. For others of you where you're in just in a different place in your spiritual journey, totally fine. Take what Brian's saying to heart and at least see and respect that he brings his faith into his workplace. And whatever your belief systems are, bring it into your workplace, bring your heart into your business. Some of us, we really just miss out on that. Any final wisdom, Brian? What's the one thing you want my listener to know about making their first $100,000 this year during a pandemic? Debrief every sales call. Be brutally honest with yourself about what's working. Eliminate what's not, and it will work for you. And stay focused on the process and be consistent and persistent. Now, now let me ask you this. Do you offer any uh, specific coaching to people who don't want to dissect their own sales calls, but see the value in having it dissected? In yes. other words, like, do you take, say, hey, send me your calls and I'm going to dissect it and show you, all right, this doesn't work, do this, and you'll get X results. Do you do Thanks. that for people? 
Yeah, thanks for asking. If I can get a recording of multiple sales conversations, I can strategically usually see what's working and what might be something to adjust. Got it. And what's the best way for Startup Nation to reach out to you if they want to take advantage of what you're offering there? They can email me at info, I-N-F-O at brianrobinson.me, M-E. Excellent. And where can they pick up your book, The Selling Formula? On Amazon, or they can go and get the first three chapters for free, the audible version at brianrobinsonbook.com. Got it. And for my skeptical listeners out there, Brian, they're saying right now, uh, you know, a lot of this stuff is really good. It's cool. I've heard it before. I don't really need Brian's book. Yet, they're struggling in their sales right now. What do you want to say to them? Why do they need to go pick up your book? There is a process here that's been proven to work in multiple industries. And I promise you, if you're willing to apply this, it will work. And if it doesn't, I'll give you your money back on the book. Just email me. Look at that. He applied a guarantee, Startup Nation. I love it. Brian Robinson, thank you for being on your first 100K. I wish you God's love, peace, and joy in your life, my friend. Thank you, Joseph. Again, it was an honor being here. Cheers. Startup Nation, you cannot show up authentically in your business without building faith in your business. If you want to have that conversation on the faith side of things, go check out my other podcast called Broken Catholic. On that show, I interview all different guests about why the world isn't working right now. Plus, I tackle unspeakable topics that you may secretly struggle with, but won't admit. We got to get your faith right to get your business right. Go to BrokenCatholic.com. I'm Joseph Warren, and you were made for greatness. So stop being a wuss and start being a winner. Have a blessed day, and I'll see you right back here next week.